a man shouts for his lazy employee while looking around for him. As the employee has not done the task he was given, he again shouts for the employee, but all of a sudden, his mouth mysteriously disappears. It's just gone. This feels like a fever nightmare. Let's find out if he gets it back or if he'll be silent forever. The episode begins as a man named Anson is being called by his boss, Jay. The lazy worker continues staring at the images of boats in a magazine, despite hearing his boss's calls on the radio. And even when the boss passes by him, he continues staring. The boss comes back and scolds Anson to get back to his work, remarking that he is never going to get any boats, being his lazy self. He then instructs him to clean the shipping container that he was assigned. Anson asks him to shut up and reluctantly goes to finish the job. In the container, he tries moving a heavy rug, but gets startled when it jerks itself away from him. He uncovers the rug to discover an unconscious woman. The boss comes back to check on Anson, but finds him gone. He starts yelling for Anson, but out of nowhere, his mouth disappears. Now, we see Mulder talking with Jay after his surgery, which, although fixed his mouth, left him with a disfigured face. This change spooks Scully on the first sight, along with the speech impediment. Jay claims that Anson was behind all this, even though he is not able to understand how he really did this. He urges the two to look into the matter, as he was told they were the only ones who could help him. They say that even though Anson is not officially a suspect, they would still investigate the case. They get to Anson's house, and while Anson watches through the window, he suspects that it's the IRS and asks his brother Leslie to get rid of them. Leslie opens the door, and Mulder says that they need to talk to Anson. Leslie lies that Anson is not home, and Mulder introduces himself as an FBI agent and that he is there to investigate Anson's ex-boss, Jay. Leslie says that the boat outside is not theirs, scared that they are going to ask for the license. Before leaving, Mulder notices the woman that Anson found in the rug. After they leave, Anson frantically talks about his last wish, and we learn that a woman is a genie called Jinnia who was invited accidentally by Anson, and she gave him three wishes, out of which two wishes were already wasted. First, being to shut Anson's boss, and second, the boat. Anson is angry at her for not fulfilling any of these wishes as he wanted. He complains that she just gave him the boat without water, and he is going to have to pay tax for it. Jinnaya is so done with his foolishness and says that he needs to specify the wishes. Her job is just to grant what he asks for. Anson then takes his time to think for his last wish as he doesn't want to waste it on something stupid. The genie tries to make him think of the most obvious wish, which is to cure Leslie's disability, but both the fools fail to notice it and keep thinking about materialistic wishes. Anson finally decides on one thing for certain. He says that he wants to be invisible at will. Jinnaya rolls her eyes and grants the wish. Anson then asks if he can make his clothes invisible as well, so she tells him no, which irritates Anson. Jinnaya remarks that he didn't specify that, so Anson then removes his clothes and goes invisible as his brother happily cheers for him. Following this, Anson strolls the streets watching two girls on the other side of the road. He approaches them while making derogatory remarks at them, when he gets hit by a truck. Take a drink if you didn't see that coming. He gets flown to the side of the street where a cyclist stumbles over him and soon the invisible Anson gets admitted to the morgue for Scully to investigate. Scully intensely powders the body with yellow powder and is bewildered to see the result, so much so she doesn't want to leave its sight, thinking it to be a great discovery for science. They find out that it's Anson who turned invisible and died due to the accident. Mulder again visits Leslie and asks him to hand over the lamp for the Ginia. At first, Leslie denies knowing anything about it, but later he hands over a box, which turns out to be just a pot. 
Mulder investigates the woman he saw earlier in Anson's place and finds videos from the past where Ginia is standing next to Mussolini in the 30s and Richard Nixon in the 60s. He shows this to Scully and remarks that both the men were the ones who got a lot of power and soon lost it in a bad way. Leslie then visits the storage unit and takes possession of Ginia and also takes the rug along into his house. For the first wish, Ginia still suggests him to wish for legs, but the fool wishes for his brother to return back to life. In the morgue, Scully excitedly takes the visiting Harvard scientists to show the invisible body, only to find out that Anson is gone. In the house, Leslie sits in front of the zombie-like Anson who seems dead in a moving and rotting body. Didn't quite think that wish through, did you, Leslie? He argues with Ginia that he wanted his brother alive, and this is spooking him out. So she argues that he didn't specify it. He just told her to bring his brother back, so she did. He then asks, as his second wish, to make his brother talk. Despite Ginia trying to warn him, Leslie insists that's what he wants, his brother to talk, and finalizes the wish, so Ginia grants it. As soon as she grants it, Anson starts to scream loudly. Meanwhile, Mulder comforts the fed-up Scully, who has made a fool of herself in front of the reputed scientists from Harvard. He deduces that the only person who can bring back Anson is Leslie. Hence, he must have gotten possession of the Genia to ask for his brother to be alive again. So they head to investigate the house yet again. In the house, Anson stops screaming and starts blaming Leslie for his condition. He asks what he has done to him as he is not able to feel his heartbeat or feel the blood run in his body. He also says that he feels so cold and blames Leslie for all of this. Leslie gets infuriated by this and says that he has wasted two of his wishes on an ungrateful Anson. He goes to turn the temperature up for Anson while getting mad and saying that he is going to use his final wish for himself. He argues with Ginia while trying to think of his final wish. Anson is getting colder and goes to turn on the stove to get some heat. While trying to open it, he breaks the regulator, and in desperation to feel heat, he tries to light the match. Just as Leslie finally gathers enough brain cells to say that he wants his legs back, Anson ends up lighting the entire house, which initiates a huge blast, witnessed by Mulder and Scully, who had just reached the house. Mulder then questions Jenia while naming her Jen. She tells him that she is 500 years old and was visited by a djinn who had given her three wishes. For her last wish, she asked for great power and long life, assuming she was being so intelligent. But she was given the power of Jinnia with the mark of jinn under her eye. That made her a prisoner for eternity where her powers are useless for her and her immortality has become a curse. Mulder thinks that she is some kind of curse or a bad spirit, as whoever wishes from her ends up dying or in a worse situation. Jen huffs in disbelief, asking if that's all he has concluded. She says that humans are such fools, as they always ask for the wrong thing. It's either money or power or something that would be their own demise. Scully asks if she is going to leave now as she is not under arrest, but Jen informs her that Mulder has unrolled her rug, so he has been given three wishes. Oh, this should be good. Later, Mulder asks her if she was given the wishes, what would she ask for? Ginia then gets a little emotional and says that she would wish that she never heard the word wish before and to live life moment by moment, enjoying it for what it is instead of worrying about what isn't. She would want to have a cup of coffee while watching the world go by. She dismisses this saying, it's not about her, it's about Mulder and asks him to make a wish. Mulder thinks hard, and assuming that he is smarter and wiser, he says that the trick must be to not wish selfishly. Rather, to wish something that would benefit everyone. So for the first wish, he asks for world peace. Jen again rolls her eyes and says that it's done. Mulder listens and in disbelief rushes out on the streets where everyone is gone. 
every living thing on the planet is gone. He goes looking for Scully and doesn't find her. This enrages him as he goes back and asks to undo it while calling her the B-word. She says that he didn't specify anything, so it's not her fault. And she remarks how Mulder can think that she could change the minds of billions of people while no god was able to do that. She accuses him of trying to take credit for changing the world just so he could feel better about himself. Following this, Mulder begins to write his final wish in order to be specific about what he wants and not let Jinnia get any loopholes while granting it. He writes a paragraph and then Scully visits him, asking for privacy from Jen. She warns Mulder that even though this is all real, it is really dangerous, as he himself said earlier. Mulder then goes on about wishing the specific thing for everyone, where there will be enough food for everyone and freedom for everyone, wishing for a happier world. Scully says that maybe the whole point of our lives on Earth is to achieve all that, instead of having one man trying to make everything right. Later, while Mulder and Scully watch a film together, Scully asks what he wished for, and Mulder just smiles. The episode ends as we see Jen at a diner, sipping coffee with no gin brand below her eye, indicating that Mulder used his last wish to release her from the bondage. So what are your thoughts on this episode? And if you had three wishes, what would they be? Keeping in mind everything we just saw. Please let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to watch more from Movie Shortens, please subscribe to the channel to be notified about when our next video is posted. As always, thanks for watching.